useful operations we can do using the view selectors in PixInsight. Firstly, we can duplicate an image. We do this by clicking on the view selector, then dragging and dropping somewhere in the workspace. This creates a new image window that's completely independent of its parent window. We can do this with previews too. If we create a preview, we can drag and drop its view selector somewhere in the workspace to create a new image window containing the preview area only. We can also duplicate previews from one image to another. If we click and drag the preview to the view selector tray of the other image, PixInsight creates another preview of the same size in the same position in that image. If the images are different sizes, the size and position of the preview created will be in proportion to the size of the target image. We can also duplicate a preview on the same image. To do this, we just drag and drop onto the same view selector tray. This gives us two identical previews. This is very useful because it means we can apply different processes to each preview. For example, we can apply a histogram transformation to the first one. Since we're clipping almost 2,000 pixels, now we'll do the same operation with a curves transformation. We'll apply this to the second preview. Now, if we toggle between the two previews, we can compare the results. We can toggle more easily using the keyboard by pressing the control key and the left and right arrows. If we press control, shift, and Z, we can compare each preview with the original image. or we can duplicate again to get another preview with the original image. In this way, we can compare the two results sequentially with the original image. If we need to see the results in more detail and compare the previews, we can zoom in and duplicate the pan and zoom in another preview. To do this, we click on the selector and drag to the other preview. Now we can switch between them using the keyboard again. We can also duplicate the zoom and pan in this preview, copying it over to the preview in the other image window, again by clicking and dragging onto the selector. Another way to compare the results of two processes applied to two images is by using pixel math. We'll apply a histogram transformation to this image and a curves transformation to this second one. We can compare the results using a simple formula in pixel math. We type the identifier of the image we want to compare here. Using this formula, Pixel Math simply superimposes the pixels of this image onto the pixels of the target image. Now we go to the preview and apply Pixel Math to it. We can compare the two images by pressing Ctrl, Shift, and Z. 
This is really useful because although this time we've only applied one process to each image, other images may have undergone a very complex series of processes and we can compare the results of two complete processing sequences by superimposing one image onto the other. When working with linear images, we must always use the Screen Transfer function, or STF. We can do this by pressing Ctrl and A to do an auto-stretch. Auto-stretch uses the statistics of each image to find the sky background level and to find the aggressiveness of the contrast adjustment. If we increase the horizontal zoom, we can see that the shadows clipping and mid-tones points are different in the two images. How can we apply the same stretch to both images to compare them? We can click on the view selector of the H-alpha image and press the Alt key to duplicate the STF in the other view. We can now see that, overall, the Oxygen 3 signal is much weaker than the H-alpha signal. We can also compare two linear images using pixel math. This time we're going to duplicate the whole main view in a preview. When we compare two linear images, their sky background levels can be quite different, so it's a good idea to equalize these levels. To do this, we type in the identifier of the image we want to compare and subtract its median value. We subtract the median because it's quite representative of the sky background level. Then we add the median of the target image. In other words, we take the image we want to compare, subtract its sky background level, then add the sky background level of the target image. We apply this to the H-alpha image, and we get a comparison where the median of the two images is the same. We can now clearly see the differences between the two structures in the two images and compare the signal intensities of the two.